What is going on, agents? It's Randall Thor 19, man with the million for the Xbox Two podcast. And with me, we have Agent Jez Corden of Windows Central. What is going on, buddy? It's Saturday. We're doing a show on on YouTube on a Saturday. It's pretty ridiculous because the week was really busy. But how are you been? I mean, good, man. It was a busy week last week. I, I, for some reason, I thought it'd be a good idea to try and review Metro and Crackdown in the same week. And I thought, I've got a week to do this. That's enough time. I sleep in about four hours a day <laughs> to try and fit them both in. But uh, we got through in the end. Yeah, two, it's a- two big reviews in one week. Not yeah, I had I had cracked down for a review and Far Cry New Dawn for a review, and I I've only put like five hours into Far Cry New Dawn because my week has been so hectic and busy. And I know your week is hectic, and like I I need to apologize to everybody that's listening. I know we aim to try to do the show Wednesday or Thursday, but sometimes Jez can't make it because of work commitments. Uh, Thursday we were going to do the show on Thursday, but you know Jez has a Valentine, and he he couldn't yeah. do it. So I was like, okay, and then Friday happened, but uh, we'll talk about why we couldn't do it Friday in just a minute. And I was like, hey, Jez, you want to do it on on the weekend, do a Saturday show? And he's like, yeah, man, we got to talk about Crackdown 3. We got to talk about everything surrounding it. Because normally it's like if we can't do it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, I usually just like, all right, let's just wait till next week. Other people do their podcast, uh, you know, on Saturdays, like Ash and Luca, who does hers in about an hour from now. And I don't want to step in other people's toes when they have their own podcast. So I started this one a little bit early and I don't think we'll be here very long. Um, but, uh, you know, I wanted to be respectful of other people's shows. So, um, Jez, I had a good week, a terrible week. And it, it I had to put down my dog on Tuesday, bro. It was, it was rough. Yeah, man. Uh, I've been there. Yeah. Uh, my condolences, man. Thanks. What was his, his name is Barnaby, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I sent you some of the pictures. Cute little puppy. Uh, you know, we 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 had him when he was like three weeks old. You know, and uh, yeah, man, it hit hard. Like it, you know, he was he was like really sick for a le- for the last year. We knew he wasn't going to make it uh, out of 2019 for sure. And he, so he was a bull mastiff. He was purebred. And he, he weighed like 130 pounds up until the last year, and he lost 50 pounds. So he was like 80 pounds. The vets thought, we're pretty sure he had cancer. Like, th- um, not sure what type of cancer, but man, his paws were like so bad. So it's like, I know it's like, oh, it's a gaming podcast, but you know, me and Jazz usually talk about what's going on in our lives. So yeah, Tuesday was rough. Like, I had, we had to put the dog down, you know, like he was my, my forever buddy, you know, and, uh, Lo and behold, two days later, uh, we decided to, without even consulting me, I didn't know about it, we rescued a English Mastiff named Shakespeare. Awesome. Uh, Good so, name. Yeah. Like, so he's upstairs right now. Oh, my God. He's the cutest, sweetest thing you could possibly imagine. Um, and he, he was... Uh, neglected by his previous owners who lived in Ohio, kept the thing out, uh, chained up outside uh, yeah, 24-7, excellent. wasn't allowed in the house. Um, he's malnourished. He needs to gain 40 pounds. And uh, like the, the thing is just so sweet. All he wants to do is just be, you know, petted and cuddled with and stuff. It's, uh, you know, and I've been, I've been hanging around with him because he has separation anxiety. Uh, so that's why I haven't been making a lot of videos or I haven't even played Far Cry New Dawn or Metro like I'm behind in my games because like, you know, I got this new dog here that I need to take care of. Um, But yeah, I mean, that was my week. You know, we go from in immense sadness to like, you know, having a new member of the family that's super cute. So, awesome. yeah. Um, How was your week? My week was uh, slightly less eventful. Just super busy with work playing through Metro and then starting it over on Ranger Hardcore and then my god Ranger Hardcore mode like Ranger Hardcore mode is like it's not that difficult on the previous Metro games but on this Metro game it's super super difficult because if you go off exploring too long you'll just run out of resources and die so um 
it's a uh, it's a very different game. And uh, so I reviewed Metro, and then as soon as I reviewed Metro, went and grinded through Crackdown, and then all the drama about that on Twitter has been fun to read. Yeah, it's fun is the right word, but it's been interesting to read. Um, other than that, it's been pretty uneventful for me, I think. Yeah, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going on in Twitter surrounding uh, Crackdown. I yeah. had uh, I had kids move, remove me, notifications. <laughs> you know, I always say, hey, if you like the channel, subscribe. You know, we have like 164 people in here already, and we just started like a few minutes ago. Hit that like button. You know, it, it helps out a lot. You know, it and there's a little notification bell like that you can hit. It's not mandatory. It's just like if you do hit it, you'll automatically get notified immediately when I upload content, right? That's usually how the spiel goes because YouTube is very weird about how it sends out notifications and if it puts your video in subscription boxes, right? So Kids Move has me on notifications. You know, I have Kid on notifications. I have a few other people on notifications as well. Like I, I watch a lot of people's videos here in the community. Um and he he didn't like my review of Crackdown. I gave it a six point five, and I know you gave it a you gave it a three point five or three out of five, which is a six. Yeah, and kids yeah. move. He he's like, no, Rand, you picked the wrong time for being objective. I'm removing you from notifications. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> come on, man. what? Whoa. what? <laughs> yeah, like man, uh, I love kids move though. He's 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 a really good dude, a really funny guy. His uh, live stream. <laughs> Talking about the scores the other day was absolutely hilarious. I never so, know if you're I never know if half of you YouTubers are serious or not. I am always serious, man. All, all I mean, my thoughts. But that's and my the thing videos... is, like, you don't know if it, with YouTubers, you don't know if they're doing it for the the entertainment or they're actually like, you know, that's their serious opinion. You never know. You never really know. So. I mean, there is a bit of entertainment. I mean, you don't want to be like a stick like a stick in the mud where you're just boring in fact i had a couple there was this one person i love I being was, a stick i know you love being a stick but there's this one person who's like I, I got tagged in something he's like oh i really like rand and this other guy's like i don't like rand he has no personality and i'm like and i said <laughs> to him and i'm like oh man that burns and he's like no offense man I, you know i'm like hey none taken like fine you know like uh, you like who you like not everyone's gonna like me clearly because you know what with this crackdown week this week, once again, once again, I got P Xbox fans, or at least people that consider themselves Xbox fans, coming at me, telling me I'm not a true Xbox fan because a true Xbox fan <laughs> would only have great things to say about Crackdown 3, that I'm a fake Xbox fan, and that I am in reality a Sony pony, that I love Sony deep under my... Uh, exterior is nothing but love for Sony, and I pretend to be an Xbox. Like I'm pre pretending. I like my guy. Like I've played like two thousand games on the Xbox ecosystem. I have over a million gamer score, like one point two million and counting. I played more games than most people have in their entire lives, just on the three hundred and sixty and the Xbox One combined. There's nothing fake about it. Sure, Sony's single player exclusives appeal more to me as a gamer. Uh, you know, at the last couple years, but I still really enjoy what Xbox is doing outside of, well, the last couple years, some of their exclusives really haven't spoken to me like some of them previously, but still it's like people get so upset over another person's opinion. It's, it's so weird. I mean, you know, and, and you, you week, told me I, this week, I've been accused of the <laughs> Sony fanboy for not giving crackdown a positive review. So there's that. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 pretty weird, man. It's it's pretty weird. But before we get into Crackdown, um, I want you to tell me about Metro just a little bit because I haven't played it yet, and I'm I'm extremely looking forward to playing it. Does it live up to the hype? Uh, and what what do you think about it? Just give me give me the really quick rundown about Metro. Am am I going to love it, Jazz? Am I going to love Metro Exodus? Well, I think like. It was kind of weird reading other people's reviews, and I, I I usually don't bother reading anything, but especially not game reviews. I usually don't bother reading them because I don't like other people's review styles to influence my own. Um, so, but I was curious, like what what the uh, criticisms were of Metro, because when I was like 
reading the summaries on Metacritic, some of the comments were like, uh, Metro's open world stuff isn't good. But the thing is, I thought it was, I think it's awesome. And um, if you played Metro Last Light, you'll remember that uh, there's like a couple of areas in the game which sort of, they're sort of like light open worlds. They're like sort of like wide open spaces where you travel between, you travel between objectives in a fairly wide area. Well, Metro Exodus sort of triples down on that. And it's got like these sort of large open world areas which are full of things to explore, uh, handcrafted uh, locations with, you know, loads of different uh, sort of pathways through the dungeons and stuff. I mean, they're not really dungeons, but that's what, that, that could almost be described like, I don't know, some of maybe Far Cry's most complicated outposts and stuff. Mm -hmm. Sort of like that. But um, they don't feel like outposts because they're still very story driven. Like, like the, they're like scripted set pieces happen throughout them. So, like for example, in in the, one of the first areas, for example, you have to you have to like go through this waterlogged warehouse to try and find something, and um, the layout could be you could think the layout is pretty similar to any sort of large Far Cry outpost or like like an outpost in any Ubisoft game, like uh, Assassin's Creed or or Ghost Recon even, where like you can sort of you can look at the outpost with your binoculars, decide how you want to tackle it. You can go in stealth, do it guns blazing, all that stuff. But the difference is that it still feels like a sort of scripted, uh, story-driven area because the whole time I was going through there, this giant catfish monster was swimming around trying to kill me like, and just kept popping up through the walls, kept destroying the, the walkways and jumping up out the water and stuff like that. And like the the... Open, like Far Cry open world stuff doesn't really have that where it's got like the story driven scripted elements as part of that whole experience. So it still feels very Metro to me, but with more freedom, like you're traveling around on a train, you're traveling across all of Russia on this train. That's like sort of post-apocalyptic steampunk upgrades and all that sort of stuff. And um, I won't give away too much about the story because it's like, it's why you're on the train is like a spoiler, pretty much. Ah. But um, but uh, like you you find out you get the train pretty early in the game, like in the first sort of couple of levels or whatever. Um, but I won't spoil why you're on the train because it's a little bit of a twist. But um, essentially, it's a story of like camaraderie between the the crew of the train and the people you meet join your crew as you're traveling across Russia to the different areas. You go across all sorts of, all sorts of different landscapes. Now it's not just sort of in the frozen waste or in the, you know, the dark Metro tunnels. It's now sort of like you, you end up in the desert at one point in the Caspian sea, you go to sort of foresty areas and stuff like that. And, um, and there's still, there's still like these sort of linear levels in between the open world levels which have like these set pieces and cutscenes and stuff like that. But it also has like these sort of open world areas, which break, break up the whole thing. So I love it. Nice. Um, so, it, but, but I will say, but, oh, so there's a but. Okay. there is a, but okay. it's uh it is a staggeringly gorgeous game. Like, like the environmental design, I would say is up there with red dead redemption for like effects and mood and tone and all that stuff. However, other aspects of the game are really starting to show their age, like the physics engine, for example. Um, mm -hmm. when, you hit, when you hit mobs with a grenade, they just sort of become ragdolls and flop down. That's mm -hmm. starting to feel pretty dated in 2019. And, um, and also the facial motion capture is really like... like if, if the environment's on Red Dead's level, the facial motion capture is nowhere near. Well, oh, I mean, the, the voice for, a, for a studio's... I think is based in Ukraine. Are they not? Um, they, I think they have an office in Ukraine, but I think they've moved the bulk of their team to Malta because of the, because of the, um, the war. Basically, yeah, the war. So I see a sub a couple questions in chat. Um, uh, Mega says not every game has to be open world. Metro is better linear. Do you agree with that? Um, well, the thing is, it's not, it's not truly what I'd call open world, really, because it's not like. It's more like wide linear. 
Mm, wide linear. Okay. So like there are be levels that are extremely <clears throat> linear and then there's like an open area you explore and then yes. you go back. To, okay. So it's okay. Um, how does it look on the X? Cause I saw Staggering. digital foundry. They said it looked amazing. Uh, there's talk that it's like the best console shooter, ever, like the best looking. So does it, does it really look that good? It, it does. Like the, the, the world itself, the lighting, like the weather effects, they just look staggering. Like it's breathtaking. Like I've, I've, I don't think I know any game where I've paused to take screenshots so often. You know, it just yeah. looks really, really good. But, I cannot, I can't wait to play it. Like I love Metro. I've played Metro 2033 three times. I played Metro last light three times. I am so looking forward to getting into Metro Exodus. It's just going to have to take, I'm just going to have to wait uh, because I need to finish far. See, here's the thing. If I start Metro now, I won't go back to far cry. Now, you know, you know, what's interesting about all the games that came out this week, right? There's four games that came out this week. It was a huge log jam, but, <laughs> but looking at it, two of them didn't review well at all. One of them kind of reviewed mediocrely. And then, and then Metro, I was surprised to be honest that Metro only hit 80. I I was expecting like 85 at, at the minimum, at the bare minimum. You yeah, know, same. I, I was surprised. Like I gave it a nine because there are so many bugs. I, I will say that like, um, I've crashed. I think I've crashed more in Metro Exodus than any other game other than Fallout 76, um, this gen, probably. It is bug-tastic. There's meant to be a day one patch, but it's still, well, it's still not here. So that's slightly worrying. But um, it's really buggy, and the physics yeah. the physics are screwed up, and there are, there are issues with it. You know, it's, it's not polished, um, which is why I docked it a point. Because if it was polished... I would have given it five out of five. Damn. So Protus X says Ran went for Far Cry. Well, it's only because I had Crackdown and Far Cry early. And I thought I would be done with both because Far Cry is not that long either. Far Cry is like a 10 to 15 hour game. Um, I usually tend to play one game at a time. Also like throwing Apex Legends in there because, oh my God, I'm so addicted to Apex Legends, Jazz. It's so oh good. Oh no. Have you not? Have you not played it? I actually played it today for the first time. And what do you what do you think about Apex? Do you understand why it's the new phenomenon? Meh. Don't excuse me. Meh. What do you what do you mean? What do you mean? Are you, Meh. you just must be not <laughs> not a fan of the battle royale genre, I guess. Which understandable, understandable. I get it. You know, not everybody's got like everything. I I get it. You're not a fan of battle royale. <laughs> I tell I tell you, like, <laughs> I just. I'm just too impatient. Like, even even in um even in uh, Apex Legends, which um the battles are about ten to fifteen minutes long, right? That's still mm. like I still had a match where I was ten minutes in and I still hadn't seen anyone. Mm, I mean that happens here fun. and there. It's not fun. I mean that, that 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 does happen. I don't have time. I don't have time to waste ten minutes sitting around and not finding anyone to kill. Yeah, but you you wasted like fifteen hours in Crackdown, so. Uh, I wouldn't say that. I think I completed Crackdown in about seven or eight hours. Oh that. man, okay. That how long did it take you to complete it? I mean, I mean, I I beat it in twelve, but I literally did everything though. Like as I was, well, I mean, we'll talk about that when we when we get to Crackdown. But shout out to right. Warebox for the super chat. He says, "I just came to pay my respect to the legends, Random Jazz." By the way, I finished Crackdown three this morning. I gotta say, it was better than I expected. Awesome, man! Glad you, uh, glad you enjoyed um, Crackdown three. But um, the reason I played Far Cry instead of Metro was because I had it early. I was gonna try to get a review up in time for the embargo. I was just so incredibly busy this week. I wasn't able to. I'm still gonna do a review when I finish it. Like I'm tonight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably play Far Cry a lot before getting into Apex Legends. And I see Di um, Almighty God. He says, remember when uh, Ran was a PUBG fanboy? Yeah, you know, seven hundred hours. I look, You're PUBG trying. was PUBG was incredibly enjoyable for me. Uh, I had a group of friends that played it all the time. It was fun. Uh and all of a sudden Apex Legends comes out and it's just like holy crap, PUBG is garbage compared to Apex Legends. 
Oh I also, like the the polish on Apex Legends is, uh, ma- makes it like almost fun to play for me. Well, this so black. I thought maybe Blackout would do it, but I hated Blackout. Like I they, could I, not. Blackout, get into Blackout wasn't that polished either. I mean, it, like when I played it, I played it near launch, and it was still pretty rough. I don't know what it is like about the genre. Like too many players in the match or something. I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 but the the like I can't believe that Apex Legends what did twenty five million players in a week. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Like the, the way they the way everything came together for them, how they stealth released it on Xbox, PS4, and PC right away. How the reception has been, it's pretty incredible to do that in this day and age of like you know social media. You know, like can you imagine if their plan went off without a hitch and it wasn't leaked. The Friday before, like if it literally was Monday and it was like, here's the stream and the game's out, and you had no clue, no clue that Apex Legends was about to drop, you know? Yeah. Like I look at it like this. Can you imagine if you watched XO18 and had no clue Microsoft was about to purchase Obsidian in, in Exile? Like the, it would be a bigger thing, but like because the Obsidian information had leaked. Like back in August, it was it was kind of like to be expected, and if it didn't happen, it would be a disappointment. You know, sometimes leaks can hurt enjoyments. Like I remember one year, like all of E3 leaked for Microsoft, like literally the entire show yeah. leaked. You know, um, so sometimes I, I you just kind of hope for, and you know what? I'll be the first to say, like I'm guilty of I'm guilty of uh, of this a lot. Like I look for leaks. I look for new information. I want to be the first to know. I want to be the first to tell my friends when I get on at night. I want to be the first to tell my, uh, you know, people here on YouTube about it, right? That's just kind of how I've always been. But then there's these moments where I was like, man, can you imagine if Monday you tune into that stream and holy crap, Apex Legends, what is this? Holy crap, it's out right now? Oh, man, that'd been so cool, but, you know. I mean, I guess I get, you know, it, it, it didn't leak that far. It was only a couple days. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> Mr. Pyro said Rand rubs his nipples when he found the leak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, le- leaks are fun. You know, some people hate them. Um, but, uh, you know, I enjoy reading stuff. Like, uh, sometimes you got to wade through the bullshit to see what's really true or not. But, yeah. But I'm going to talk about Far Cry really quickly from what I played. Um, man, it's, it's really like Far Cry 5, Jez. A lot. It's like they, they took, they took the entire map, kind of did some changes. It's 15 or 17 years later and everything is like, you know, growing back. You have those like pink colors. The game actually looks really good. I ain't going to lie. Looks actually better than Far Cry 5. And some of the shooting like feels a little bit better, but the big change in this one is health bars over enemies head and your weapons uh you know when you shoot somebody they uh you can see the numbered damage come off because now you have tiered loot so they put in like light rpg elements in the game how do you and to be that? at first i was like uh eh, this ain't it chief you know what i mean like i'm not really sure but then when you're fighting an enemy who's level one and you have level one gear they die just as quickly as they do in far cry you know, like regular Far Cry, you just happen to see the health bar now. Now, yeah, if you're fighting a level two guy with level one gear, they take a little bit more damage to take down, but they still go down. Uh, if they, if you're fighting a level three cougar with level one gear, it, it's kind of you know a hassle. But like level two gear versus level two enemy, it's like it's that it's like there's no difference. You know what I mean? Um, but apparently this one's really short i haven't really gotten a lot of time into it yet so i'm gonna i'm gonna try to crank it out and then i can get metro and then it'll be anthem which you've played a little bit of anthem so let's talk about it right now (laughs) you're playing it right now so talk a little bit about anthem and then we're gonna delve into the crackdown three this review scores what we thought the whole hoopla surrounding it is it okay for a game like crackdown like what does it mean for crackdown to be the perfect xbox game pass game game informer calling it the pinnacle of mediocrity you know like is you know like so many different things coming out about crackdown 3 we're gonna get to that really soon i promise so if you're enjoying the show now make sure to get hit that like button and share it out but jez quickly anthem what do you what are your what are your initial impressions on it well 
I think like the first the important thing to note is that they've po polished it a lot from the demo, which they shouldn't have called a demo. They should have called that an alpha or a beta or something, because calling it a demo makes you think it's a demonstration of the final game. Like back in my day, a demo was a, a slice of the final game. So I think like the, by just simply branding it as demo, they probably harmed themselves needlessly there. But luckily, it is mostly polished up. Like the frame rate's a lot tighter than it was. Yeah, it, it could still be better. You know, and this is playing on the Xbox One X. Um, it could still be better. Like Fort Tarsus is still sluggish to get around. Um, that's that's the uh, sort of social hub type place. Or well, I don't. It's not the social, but it's like it's like where you you do all the story stuff and you man manage your gear and and stuff like that. Um, that could be better. Um, but other than that, it's uh, it's going to be interesting, really, because I think what will make or break Anthem is the end game stuff. Because like leveling up is sort of leveling up in these sort of connected world RPG shooters. It's sort of like it's always kind it's always fun to play with friends, go around killing stuff. The combat feels really nice and getting loot's fun and there's loads of different weapons and loads of different abilities and the classes are very different. Like one of my pet peeves about Destiny is that the classes are pretty much the same. Like there's I mean, at least like I don't know what it's like now, but in Destiny two and Destiny One vanilla classes were basically the same but they had different colored grenades and like slightly different alts and stuff like that like um anthem's really not like that like the classes are genuinely different and they fill different roles in combat which makes combat more rewarding um but ultimately it's gonna hinge on whether there's stuff to do in the end game you know um mm -hmm. What, what about me who doesn't care about the end game? I just want to get in there, experience the single player, maybe have a good time in co-op, maybe experience a decent Bioware story. Am I actually going to get that? Or, or You're not going to get, you are not going to get a Bioware story from this. Uh, don't, don't tell me that, Jez. I think like, um, I think that's where like one aspect of the game that I'll probably get panned is that, I mean, it's got like, you can it's got like these really soft dialogue choices where you can basically select to say the same thing but i have no idea why i have no idea why they um they added dialogue choices at all because both of them are basically the same and they don't change the outcomes of anything um they, it's almost like they just added that in as some some sort of throwback to bioware star storytelling but they needn't have bothered because it's pointless um, there's a there's a codex that's full of lore about the game's world, and for those who don't know, Anthem is set like Anthem is set on a sort of alien planet, and the humans are native to the planet, but they've sort of they've lost their history. They don't know, they don't really know much about the planet, and there's this there's this mysterious force called the Anthem of Creation, which sort of spawns out of nowhere and destroys everything and creates monsters and stuff like that. And it's like a hostile world and it's hard to live there and stuff like that. And you play as a freelancer and it's your job to try and make it easier for the, uh, you know, the, the surviving people to live there basically. Right. Um, but the story, it's not a Bioware story. It's not, it doesn't feel like the story is a focus by any means, at least not so far. You know, it feels like, a loot, a loot shooter, you know, it feels like Destiny, it feels like Diablo, that mm. sort of thing. And I think on that basis, um, I think on that basis, you know, if you enjoy Diablo, De Destiny, and, you know, Monster Hunter games where, where basically you just jump on with friends, kill things, kill monsters, get loot, perfect your playstyle, and get the loot you want and stuff like that, I think it could be a game that you could really sink your teeth into. At least that's what I'm hoping. But I think, like, if you want to play as a single player experience, story experience, and then just move on, I don't think you're going to get that much out of it, frankly. Damn. See, DJ Singh says, Rand, I don't care about Endgame. Did Rand say he's a casual? Just kidding, lol. <laughs> <laughs> There's the thing there's so many games to play, and I've said this before. I play a lot of games, even though, like, I'll play Apex and PUBG a lot, but I like to play everything that comes out. I'm just not really interested in, in playing like Anthem for hundreds of hours or Destiny for hundreds of hours just to get, you know, 
shinier loot so I can take down the bosses on a harder to dif- harder difficulty. It's the same thing with Division Two. Like I'm just that. That's just not me. You know, that's just not my game style. That's just not what I enjoy. I'll still go through Division Two and play through the story. I'll go through Anthem, play through the story, and then move on to the next game. You know, after Anthem's out, we got devil may cry five and then the vision two and then sekiro and then mortal Kombat and rage i'm gonna be playing all those games i didn't like that i like i like getting my teeth into something i like i like turning a game into a hobby you know and i was just i I was tweeting the other day you're but you were brought up like that you see you started you 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 brought up with world of warcraft which is a hobby (laughs) i didn't play world of warcraft so like, and I think this goes back to when I was a kid. Like, my first system that I got was an NES, right? I had like 150 NES games. So, and, and I had the most, like, it, out of like everybody at like school. So, like, I had my pick and choose. And then I got a Genesis. I had like over 100 Genesis games. I had 32X. So, like, when eventually I had my own money, you know, I got a GameCube. Um, I had a ton of PlayStation 1 games, a ton of PlayStation 2 games. I started a Gamefly subscription back in 2004, and I was getting four out from Gamefly just to play as many games I could possibly play. I would get a game from Gamefly, play it, beat it, send it back. Get another game from Gamefly, play it, beat it, send it back. And I did that for the entire 360 gen. That's why I got like so much gamer score is because I had just been playing Like I normally play, I just play so many games and I've been doing that since I was a kid, since the NES. Um, I did that too. You know, I had like, I had a blockbuster video, you know, I used to, you know, buy rent games and then take them back and stuff like that. But I think like, uh, but I was into, I was into Final Fantasy, right? And Final Fantasy 11 is what got me into MMOs because Final Fantasy 11 was an MMO and it was like, oh wow, this is, this is what I want from a game. You know, I want, I want, I want to live in the game. That's great. But Final Fantasy 11 was also one of the worst games ever made, sadly. Mm. <laughs> well, mm. I went, it wasn't the, one of the worst games ever made. It was one of the most soul destroyingly difficult games I've ever played. Sure. Soul destroyingly difficult games ever made. Oh, okay. I, I could, I could like, I could, tell horror stories about how hard Final Fantasy XI is. But but then World of Warcraft came along and it was basically like... Because I think back then it was like MMOs... I don't know why. They just they just decided MMOs had to be really hard. But then Blizzard was like, why, does it, why do MMOs have to be hard? Let's make World of Warcraft. And World of Warcraft was easy and it didn't punish you for dying and stuff like that. And it was like, oh wow, this, this, is, this is it. This is the game. And I was I was actually tweeting last week that I have over ten thousand hours played in World of Warcraft. Mm. So, and what do you think about play. EA's whole staggered launch stuff, where <laughs> you could play it right now on the PC full release if you subscribe to Origin Access? You could also play it for ten hours on Xbox, but then you also have you know like they did it with Battlefield Five, although to a more fragmented degree. Now they're doing it with Anthem. Uh, mm. What do you what do you think about that whole strategy? I think it's uh, needlessly convoluted. Yes, um, exactly. It's, <laughs> it's kind of annoying, you know, because <clears throat> even like because we're we're doing we're doing anthem coverage, and you know that means we're researching it quite a bit and stuff like that. Even I was confused when I was trying to boot the game up yesterday, and I think there was a bug where um, Xbox didn't get access as fast as it was supposed to. But I was like, why am I not getting access? Uh, like, and, uh, and then you've got Origin Premiere gets full access now if you're a subscriber to Origin PC Premiere. But Xbox gets 10 hours now mm-hmm. and, on EA access. And, and then PlayStation people have to wait till the 22nd. And after 10 hours, everyone has to wait for the 22nd, except for PC gamers who have it on Origin. God! It's weird because Battlefield Five did did like a similar thing. It was like Origin Access and the ten hour thing, and then they also had uh, you could buy the deluxe version and play it five like four days early. So you had Origin Access a week early, and then the, the people who bought the deluxe playing it early and stuff. It was kind of 
kind of uh kind of really ridiculous but i I do wonder if they're gonna continue with that model going forward i mean obviously a hundred dollars a year for that is uh, a lot but i'm uh, moving on we got a making question. money they'll ki- if they're making money on it they'll continue with it you know i mean people well of course people people troll them about it and there was memes about how convoluted it is and stuff like that but they're making money they ain't gonna stop doing it so yeah so we got a question from AK Mass Saphir in the uh, super chat. He says, "Great show, guys! On Crossfire, you mentioned games going to Switch. What are the chances Xbox gets nothing in return?" Thanks for the show, guys. So Jez and I talked about this on the last show. This idea with Xbox Live going to Switch that potentially X- Xbox might publish games on Switch, or there might be games streaming through XCloud on the Switch. Stuff like Ori 2 or Cuphead or Super Lucky's Tale. Um, it's the thing, who's publishing Hellblade on Switch? Because that was announced this week. That is true. Although I think I saw a couple of Nintendo people, like Emily Rogers, say that that was in discussion before Microsoft bought them. Right. So who knows? Like, I, 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 maybe, I mean, I would assume Microsoft is publishing it, right? I mean, they publish. It's, it's they, uh, opportunity to get their logo on the i mean they the, do publish the minecraft on the yeah. switch um i don't think xbox gets i don't think i don't think you, you look at it like oh you scratch my back i'll scratch yours i just think xbox is just there's an opportunity for them to put xbox live on another platform they're gonna do it they may not get anything in return other than access to switch owners if that makes sense i tell you what they get in return they get a load of money like mm-hmm. What I mean, do you think like Microsoft isn't going to make any money from them selling the games there? They're going to make loads of money. Um, so like the money that they make selling games on Switch will be reinvested in Xbox and reinvested in Xbox gamers. It's like there is no there is no downside, you know. And like Phil Spencer said in an interview, that in a way you actually want to sell in a weird sort of way you actually want to sell less consoles. Because you um, because you don't make money on the consoles. If someone's like, if someone's bought a console, and uh, they're not buying any games, then they are bad for your business. Whereas um, if you are maximizing potential of everyone who's owns your console, and you have like a highly engaged audience, that is a better business model. So for Microsoft, their their thought process is ultimately um. We want to get our games on as many platforms as possible because that's where the margins are. Better margins means more profit, means more reinvestment in Xbox and Xbox gamers. So that's what Microsoft gets in return. Um, that's I still, the way they I still see it. fundamentally disagree with that assessment or assertion that you want to sell. Like I could, I could agree with you if you said because I know there's people out there that will buy multiple consoles, like. Uh, you know, like all the custom consoles, right? And they'll have like eight Xboxes, right? Like I get. Well, it's it's not that they want to sell less console. It's it, the point. The point he was making was, you want to. I know. I know. I, I mean, I know the point he was making, but like the idea that like you don't want it. Like I get that they don't they don't make money on consoles. I I understand that, but like the only way to build a big audience to access Xbox X, and I guess. The point would be, well, they can access Xbox Live through mobile and all these other places. But like, the idea that like we don't want to sell as many consoles or sell a console to have to users only going to buy one game because we don't make money on it, so it's a, it's a loss for us. Uh, that, that, that's the thought process we talk behind putting Xbox games on Switch, because then you're selling Xbox games without the loss making the loss making part of the business. And that's the same the thing with 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 selling the games on the PC. Like, I get it. It's just. It's just it's it's I don't think people it's still weird it's still weird to hear like oh we we would lo- it, don't buy our if you're only gonna buy one one game on Xbox or two games don't even bother buying the Xbox <laughs> like just just don't because we're not gonna make any money off you I mean that then games that make more money of course Di says that we all know that. that's the that's the goal of any single business it's to make more money it's how they go about it um because you know like. I've actually had conversations with with like people, you know, like Phil and he and and the con- the the talk of like, hey, this person bought ten Xboxes, and he was like, man, I really wish they didn't, Be- like because that's nine Xboxes not getting used by people to buy games. It's just one person, you know what I mean? 
but so that's I don't know. That's uh that's that whole thing. But uh crackdown. Oh boy, here we go. Crackdown. Um oh man, there's lots surrounding this. Uh five years in development. Or four years or five years. I mean, who actually knows how long this game was in development? I wouldn't be surprised if it start started and stopped and started and stopped. It was originally revealed back in E3 2014. Uh, the same E3 where Microsoft revealed Fable Legends canceled, Lionhead shut down. Same E3 where Microsoft revealed Scalebound canceled. Same E3 where Microsoft revealed Phantom Dust canceled. <laughs> and now we have Crackdown 3 finally out. And it's... Well, I gave it a 6.5. I said there's fun to be had if you're a Crackdown fan. The agility and all that stuff is great. The feeling of becoming a superhero is on point. But I felt, ultimately, that it was a last-gen game remastered for current-gen. I think it looks good. The HDR is vibrant on my LG OLED. My big issue was the mission structure, which hadn't really changed since Crackdown 1. But I've maybe I've changed in 12 years. It's been 12 years since Crackdown 1. I found it incredibly boring after a certain amount of time. Uh, so much so that it was just like by hour eight, I was just, I just, I was just like, I need to finish this because I'm so, it's just so boring and so rote, but that's just me. So don't get upset at my opinion, you know? And it's not, it's not like I gave the game a four or something. I gave the game a 6.5. I was sitting at a seven from, for about five hours when I was originally playing it. And then I got incredibly bored due to the repetitious nature of the game and I dropped it a, a half a point. Uh, you were a little bit harsher than me. You gave it a six out of ten. Um, you want to give your thoughts on it, and then I I'll give it a little bit. <clears throat> I would have given it five out of ten if it wasn't for Game Pass. You would have given like, it a five out of ten if it wasn't for Game Pass. Wow. Well, the the thing is, like, I approach I approach game reviews like any of the tech product we review, like head headphones or software and stuff like that. And I think about like the value for money proposition, and you know what are the what are the games are coming out at the moment? What are the, you know, I'm not an art critic, you know, I'm a tech blogger. So I come at it a bit differently to maybe some, some of the game reviews out there, but I, I try to think about the user and like, am I recommending this game? Mm -hmm. Like I find it incredibly difficult to recommend for $60. Like I marked recall up a point because I thought they got the price point, right? State of decay two as well. They got the price point, right? They acknowledged it wasn't a $60 game. I think the idea of asking people to pay $60 for Crackdown Free is a bit offensive. Because it bit doesn't of... fit. It's That's offensive. harsh. That's it's harsh, a, bro. It's not a $60 game. No, no. I, I agree <laughs> with you. I did say in my review, I honestly couldn't recommend, recommend it to anybody for $60 except diehard Crackdown fans. It felt, the campaign at least, felt more like a $30 package. Right? The crack, so the campaign, I was like, so $30, sure. But then there's the whole Xbox Game Pass thing, which we'll get into because there's a whole bunch of thing uh, tied around that. And I just want to thank DeBlob. Shout him out for the super chat. Really appreciate it. Um, <sighs> word. <sighs> All right. So is there a problem? Because this is something I see bandied about, about a game being like another game. A lot of the criticisms uh, that people have for it is that it's too similar to Crackdown 1. Me in particular... Um, it's not that it's a criticism of it. It's just that I felt I felt it was boring. And then the defense would be, well, then you should dock Uncharted because Uncharted Four is too much like Uncharted One, or Gears Four is like like Gears, or Halo is too much like Halo, or Call of Duty is too much like Call of Duty. How much of that yeah. is that true, Jez? But uh, the thing is, I I didn't have that frame of reference because this was my first ever Crackdown game. This okay, so this was your first I Crackdown played, game. This is the first time I played Crackdown. You know, and. Even without that frame of reference, I I felt like I was playing a 360 game, a 360 launch title. Even you know, like the the animations are janky, the the vehicle handling feels past gen. You know, the graphics are really disappointing, and you can see how you see how poor the model work is in in like there's like three or four in engine cutscenes in the whole game, and like when it when it like shows the the boss characters' faces up close. It's like, my God, man! Is it someone make this in Source Filmmaker or something? You know, it's just, it just doesn't look good, man. It just doesn't look good. And 
it's fine, you know. Games don't have to look good if they're fun, but I didn't find it that fun either, you know. And the weapons are really unbalanced too. It's like the the firearms are all weak as hell. So like you, you pretty much like stop using firearms towards the end of the game because everything you come up against is played in armor, and the firearms are weak against armored mobs and mechs and stuff like that so you end up just using three rocket launchers towards the end of the game that's exactly what i did like exactly. i like Why four hours in but that four hours in and i i had the three weapons i used for the rest of the game and i used nothing else i used the prophecy rifle <clears throat> for quick like shots that I, I wanted to do you know on an enemy i used the homing rocket launcher and i used the jackhammer because nothing else because those were the best weapons in the game those literally would decimate anything yeah and, and there, there's there's some fun weapons like the vortex i think it's called the vortex cannon or something that does like that thing yeah, yeah like yeah. like that's it's fun to use but it's like suboptimal it's like and if you <laughs> it's like you have to force yourself to use it because it's there's rarely a situation that occurs where using that gun is worthwhile most of the time you just want to use a rocket launcher because a it does damage high damage to every type of enemy and B, it's splash damage, and it's just, and it also it looks better. You know, it's, it causes huge massive explosions, which are, are way more fun than like piddly little bullets, which are doing twenty five damage a pop. And like, for people who might be saying, "Well, you didn't level up your firearm skill," no, this is with this is with level five explosives and level five firearms, which is what I, which is what I had when I completed the game. You know, I think my explosives did end up edging out slightly, but for the most part, my firearms. We're pretty much even level yeah you know? and it's the the guns are just poorly balanced you know and there was just no reason to use any firearms well, i i guess that's <laughs> just the problem with having giving gamers complete control from the beginning because you can go anywhere you can do everything if you do find the weapons you can start with that stuff and it's not like i didn't try out other weapons i did i would get the new weapons try them out and be like i don't really like this one you know there's that one that suits like green slime i'm like this is kind of this is kind of dumb. Like, and then it was just like, okay, I found my two rocket launchers. I can switch. The and they, <laughs> it's just like, okay, I'm doing the same, but my, see the cardinal sin for me for a game is if, if I get bored. Okay. If I get bored, it's, it's over because like when I play, like when I played far cry five all the way through, I didn't think about not playing far cry five. Like I was thinking about far cry five when I wasn't playing about far cry five. Right. Same thing with apex legends. Like, the games I gave incredibly high scores to, I didn't get bored once. Spider-Man, God of War, uh, you know, Forza Horizon. I don't get bored playing that stuff. But within five hours of playing Crackdown, I was bored. Maybe it was because, like, I'm older because it is just Crackdown 1. Which well, this, well, this is the thing. This is another thing, right? Speaking about being older. Because I was thinking while playing it, this would be great for kids. However... It has the most ridiculous amount of swearing, you know. Oh, and point, smut? Pointless, pointless <laughs> swearing, and a point. There's like a pointless area with strip clubs too. Yeah, I was like, I was shocked why? to see that in a Microsoft game, like triple X smut and like strippers dancing in a. Ho I'm like, this is a Microsoft game. Like, I'm kind of surprised to see this. It's you know, it's literally like why you could have you could have like. You could have marketed this to younger audiences and maybe made some more money. Because, like, I think younger audiences would have liked the bright, vibrant colors, the explosions, you know, the simplistic gameplay and, frankly, easy gameplay. It would have been a great game for kids, like ReCore. But they added all this ridiculous swearing, which, you know, is just dumb. It just comes off as bad writing. And, um, hey, don't, don't like a teenager wrote it. like that, man. Well, I don't know, man. I'm just not... I don't know why they did that. I don't know you, what tone they were going for. It just... I it, don't get it. Is that what the other Crackdown's like? I honestly don't remember. It's been a long time since I played Crackdown 1, yeah, this is to be thing, honest right? with you. Yeah, I'm British. I, I don't care about swearing. I swear constantly, right? But... <laughs> if, I was making, if, I'm making, if I'm making a video game and I want it to do as well as possible... I'd I'd be looking at Crackdown and thinking like, you know, do we need all Look, this swearing? 
I don't really. This I, isn't going to appeal to adults anyway because it's I, not a great game. I don't. I don't mind swearing. Like uh, swearing's fine to me, right? I, there are a couple instances in the game, and I'm going to give one example here. I'm going to use my one time I can say the f bomb without. Well, I'm still going to get demonetized. I always get demonetized. That's the problem. My videos get demonetized all the time. Like m- this podcast, as soon as it's done doing it, it's demonetized immediately, right? Oh. So there was this one time I found an agent DNA orb, which, you know, it's cool. You can play as other agents, but there's really no reason to play as anybody except for Terry Crews. I picked this one up and the guy's like, you found Hawk. He has no fucks to give. (laughs) 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 Like what? Like I literally sat there and started laughing. I'm like, okay, that that was all right. A little, a little, little weird, but like just the way he said that, like the, that the director, the way he said that just made me laugh. But like, I don't know, like getting all that stuff, uh, think, collecting the orb. I mean, that kind of, I mean, like for example, in Rage Two, I know Rage Two is going to be full of swearing and ridiculous, over the top dialogue and stuff like that. But I also know Rage Two is going to be incredibly violent, gory, and you know, you can cut people in half with a shotgun and and do all that sort of stuff. Like it makes sense for the tone of the game for it to be ridiculous and violent with with its language and its gameplay. But Crackdown is not like that. It's like it's the gameplay is pretty accessible, you know, like the, 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 the villains are pretty, you know, pedestrian and, you know, the uh, violence is pretty low down, you know, there's no real you blood know- or guts or anything like that. So I don't know why they went for this sort of, we're going to try and appeal to, you know, adults thing. Well, because, because- it's, because it's game pad, but because I forget who it was. Maybe it was Polygon or somebody of the Verge. They said this was the Netflix original of gaming. It was the perfect game for Game Pass, which we're going to talk about. Uh, we've got a question from Eternal Shaddai from Super Chat. He says, Sean Layden said quality above all at Dice, which, you know, he did. But it seems on Crackdown 3 is not about quality, but more of experience. Which one is more important than quality or experience? So which one's more important, quality or experience? I, I think it depends on the it's game. Changeable, right? Well, you can. Well, I mean, he's part of the experience. I would say. Well, you, true. I think. I think there's. I think they they can be separate, but they can they can go hand in hand. Which one is more important? I mean, I the experience of playing the game is really important to me, which is probably why like I enjoy games like Inside a lot or something like What Remains of Edith Finch, even though both those games are quality. The experience of those games, even though they're only three hours long, speaks to me on a personal level. Like that of being there in that moment and experiencing it. You know, same thing with God of War, right? Um, Same thing with the Halo games. The experience, that means a lot to me. And I I remember one of my buddies on Twitter, Nick, uh, he says, I, because we were, I was, uh, he was comparing me to uh, Broken Games, like BG. BG for those of you who don't know, he runs the weapon wheel podcast. He's more of like what Nick said, more of a technical gamer or mechanical gamer. Like he didn't like red dead redemption two because he felt the quality of red dead redemption two's gameplay, uh, you know, with the aiming and all that, uh, the, the tank like movement and stuff really dragged down his enjoyment of it because he just couldn't get over the gameplay. So the quality aspect, but like, the experience of, of Red Dead 2 for me was unparalleled from any game I played last year. And Nick said, you know, BG is mechanical and, uh, you know, all that stuff. And I'm more of a spiritual gamer because to me, sometimes it's more about the experience of playing through something uh, than anything else. And I think that's kind of right. Lucifer says, come on, Edith Finch, one of the worst games ever made. The story is terrible, at least, in my opinion. I mean, hey, it's your opinion. You don't like Edith Finch. I'm just saying I love Edith Finch. Um, and I'm sure there are plenty of people that will say the same. You can look on Metacritic to find some critic reactions, but I mean, everybody has different opinions. Like, uh, Ravenflow says he fell asleep during Red Dead. I mean, like I said, and I'm sure, and I've seen it on Twitter. There are plenty of people out there that are enjoying Crackdown three. I've, not, ne- I've never gotten around to finishing Red Dead myself. I, but, right, but like you see, when someone comes to me and says Red Dead Redemption 2 is garbage and I didn't like it, I'm not going to tell them they're wrong. I mean, it's, gaming is a su- subjective experience for each person, right? You you like what you like, you like what you, you don't like what you don't like. So, uh, like, someone gets on Twitter, like, I've seen plenty of people, some of my friends, like Colt Eastwood, my buddy Colt, he loves Crackdown 3. I'm not going to tell him he's wrong. 
Like who, um, who am I to say to, to <laughs> say that his, well, you will, you will, because you think, what did you, what did you tell me when we were in chat or, or before we started the podcast? Are, what were your just, exact words? There are quantifiable things that are bad about Crackdown. Right. Qu- okay. Okay. Sure. I think I personally, that that's what I, I feel. <coughs> there are, so, sorry, choke him. There are things that there are things about games, like any piece of software, that you can that are quantifiably not good. I I personally think, and I think Crackdown has a lot of them. Um, so like, <clears throat> I totally appreciate that. You know, I, I'm I had fun with Crackdown to a degree, you know, but it's kind of like when you jump and shoot a rocket and then pick up a truck and throw it. That's pretty much the whole gameplay loop for six hours. You know, and that to me, that's not great. You know, for a game that was in development as long as it was, and you know, I'm not throwing blame at any of the devs or anything like that because I, I am aware that there was significant developmental problems with the whole thing, and Cloud Gin being bought by Epic Games really did screw up development and stuff like that. And then things start falling apart. You know, it's um. <clears throat> It's like when you're making a game, it's kind of like, have you ever, I mean, this is the impression I get. Obviously, I don't make games, but I kind of feel like you could compare it to um, when you're working to a deadline in a, a restaurant or something, and then like one thing goes wrong, and then it sort of has this sort of knock-on effect, and then like lots of other things go wrong. I kind of get that impression that a lot of things went wrong with Crackdown, but yeah, I digress. It's... um. I don't know. But you said there's things like yeah, I know you said there's things object- objectively bad about 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 Crackdown, but the thing for me that I couldn't get over was it was just boring. Like 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 I said, like the experience of Crackdown for me was just one of boredom. Like it look it looks great. Like I, it looks nothing like a 360 game. The HDR is vibrant. Uh you know, like I said, the movement, collecting the agility, agility orb still addicting, building up your agent from level one to level five feels great. It's it's great to go from punching people a bunch of times to like level five and just punching them and they just die. The driving, oh my god, driving is some of the worst driving I've ever experienced in a game in a long time. I don't even know why it's a part of the game. I think it's only there because it was in the previous ones. They needed to axe that. Um I mean, those are the good things about it. Like it, perf- it holds a frame rate well. Like when you're when you're double jumping, and it, it feels a lot like Recore in that sense. They give you a triple jump and and two dashes in midair that you can that you can do right. And it was just like, uh, yeah, I, that's another thing. It's like it felt like Recore. Um, I ended up just playing it like Recore, doing the double jump, dash, shoot things, and then rinse, repeat. Yeah. yeah. So, Game Informer said that Crackdown Three is the pinnacle of mediocrity, which I think is a good way of putting it. I mean, it wasn't. It, it, it's not like so bad that it was like I hated playing it, and like I don't think I even would say that I got really bored of it. I think like I started to get bored around the the point where I finished it. I think if I played it anymore past the six hour mark, I might have started to get really annoyed and fed up. But yeah, um, you know, so it is what it is. DJ Singh asked, "Is Ryan saying Ryan McCaffrey from IGN is a fraud?" He said it looks like a three sixty game. I think Ryan, who I respect a great deal, needs to get his eyes checked. I think it looks like um, 360 game. I do not. Absolutely do not. Not on a 4K television, on an Xbox One X with HDR. It does not look like a 360 game. And I think the people that say that ha- don't remember what a 360 game looks like. I'm going to check. I'm going to check right now. I'm telling you right now, dude. I'm pretty sure. I'm, when I'm pretty they, sure, when they... all right. When you, when, you look, when you look at the dude's face... Like, what's his name? Quist, I think his name is. There's like, there's a scene where you you fight. You're about to fight a boss, and it zooms up on his on in on his okay. face. You get you got better faces on the 360. Sure. Sure. I don't know about that, dude. Like, I, I, I seriously early think, yeah. early gen 360. No, like, early gen. Like no. late gen. But I'm gen, talking about sure. like Halo. Halo Four was the 360 game. Remember? Yes. It was also yeah, a that game looked, that came out in 2012, though. Yeah, but that looked better than Crackdown 3. I'm just saying, like, if you, like, 
You know who puts up a lot of crackdown videos? Uh, Crap Gamer. Crap Gamer, when he talks about crap, when he talks about crackdown, he has little literal footage of crackdown one running. You mean to tell me that that footage of crackdown one looks exactly like crackdown? That's what I'm hey, saying. People... I'm not saying it looks like crackdown one. I'm saying it looks like a 360 game. I'm saying it, I'm saying that Halo four looks better than crackdown three. You know, I'm saying I'm saying Red Dead Redemption one looks better than crackdown three. I'm saying that there are 360 games that look better than crackdown three, much better. And even stylized games, you know. Uh, Goran A says, Rand, stop it. Don't, just don't. You're losing credibility. Jez is 100% right, 120% even. Man, I mean, I don't know. Look at this dude's face, man, in my review. No, I'm, I, look, look. I, I said in my <laughs> review that it's a 360 game. Like, the, the animations, the gameplay, it's a 360 game through and through. I just don't think it looks like a 360 game. At least it doesn't on my, my, my 4K L, uh, LG OLED B8. I mean, it okay, looks, like the, really the HDR, good. HDR and stuff like that maybe hides some of it. But if you strip that away, like for example, I don't have HDR. Well, well, I'm not TV even right saying. I'm not even saying it's the best looking game ever made. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, like th to me, when I when I play it, when I look at it, I'm like, yeah, this is an Xbox One game. Like I, I think people that say it's a 360 game is just hyperbolic. You know, like oh, it's so shitty. It looks like a 360 game. You know, like the, it's just used to say like this game, you know, it, it doesn't, it, it's just a way of putting, I don't know. Like it could, it could be a 360 game. You put the slap, slap that 720p and, you know, put it on 360. It'll look, it'll just be a 360 game. And just because, just because it scales up to 4k doesn't mean it doesn't look like a 360 game. In my mm. opinion. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, like I could put, I could install Crackdown Three on my on my Surface, and bump the resolution down, and you wouldn't know. It would look like a 360 game. You know, I'm not. I'm not attacking stylized games because, like, cartoon stylized games can work. I mean, look at Overwatch for example. Overwatch is, Overwatch is a cartoony stylized game with like low details because they want it to run on as many systems as possible. But it doesn't look like a 360 game because it does the right stuff. Crackdown doesn't, man. I, I, I look, I'm not like like I, I'm, there's definitely better looking game <laughs> from Xbox. I'm just and I'm just saying like to me, and I, I've said this even when I was watching footage before I played it myself. I'm like, man, people who say this looks like a 360 game are crazy. Because it doesn't, <laughs> but like I, I obviously other people will disagree. I disagree. Uh, but I, I want to talk about Game Pass and Crackdown Three because this comes up a lot. This came up because I joined Crossfire last night. Talk some sense into people. <sighs> the idea, okay. So there's some people who'll be like, "It's fine. Crackdown Three is fine because it's in Game Pass." Right there's this there's this idea that it doesn't really matter how good or how bad Crackdown is or any matter or any of the Xbox first party games because it's a Game Pass and what do you expect for ten dollars and I think that thinking is wrong and flawed I because think, I think that thinking is dangerous because exactly exactly it, it could uh, it, we we could end up in a situation where Microsoft is just like eh. We don't need to try because it's in Game Pass. I'm scared that that they're gonna settle into that. Yeah, like so. Face, uh, thanks for the super chat. He says, "Why do people use Game Pass as an excuse for mediocrity?" And that's the whole point of this this conversation. And just so I don't miss it, um, somebody else, uh, DVM fan one two three, he also super chat and said, "More faith in Star Wars Fallen Order after Apex Legends." I always had faith in Star Wars Fallen Order. I love Respawn. That was my third most anticipated game of the year, and I haven't even seen what it looks like, but. Yes, I don't understand why Game Pass is used for an excuse for mediocrity. And, okay, Forza Horizon 4, amazing game. The best racing game out there, like you judge by Metacritic, like Forza is the pinnacle of racing now. You can't argue with that if you're going to use Metacritic as your god, and a lot of people do. I mean, game, there's nothing mediocre about, about, game, uh, about you know, uh, that game, right? But like Sea of Thieves, State of Decay, I mean, I understand those two games, plus this one in particular, these games were in development for a long time, four years, right? Back in 2014 before Game Pass really even was a thing. 
But there's this sense that it's okay for Microsoft to put whatever they want in Game Pass from their own first party just because, well, it's okay. It's it's 10 bucks. Like, what are you expecting for 10 bucks? I think that, like with Jez, I think that is the wrong way of thinking. I think you should go into Game Pass. I, I think you should say, oh my God, the game I just played, Crackdown 3, was amazing. I would have paid $60 for this, but I got it for 10. Not... Eh, it's ten bucks. Who cares? I'm not a fan of that thought because it I don't know what advance the industry, and like it's it's hard because I speak to game devs all the time, and a lot one of the one of the common threads is game development is unsustainable. Like like re, like for example, Rockstar. There was all this stuff about Rockstar working its workers to death to make Red Dead Redemption 2. And we always hear about bad things happening in CD Projekt Red and their workers getting pushed really hard to make, you know, Cyberpunk and Witcher 3 and all these games that like really advance the industry and the the art of making games. They have a human cost attached to them. Now, that's one that's one argument that I hear a lot when it comes to um, expectations about what a game, what a AAA game should look like, is that that whole idea of making a AAA game with that sort of level of fidelity, those that amount of features, a 100-hour campaign and all that stuff, a lot of people say that's unsustainable and um, unfair on workers and stuff. And, you know, Blizzard just laid off 800 employees because uh, Activision decided they weren't making enough games, you know. So there is clearly some debate here about whether games have just become too expensive to make, you know? Yeah, Hello? I mean, of course, I mean, games are expensive. They're becoming more expensive. Um, I just... Is, is Microsoft trying to dial it back with these games? I don't think so. I, I, I don't... I, I think... To be honest, my my in th- my what I think they did with Crackdown was they just wanted it out. They just wanted it to be out, and they can just move on from it because it's been a joke for so long that they finally were just like, all right, we're at a point. The campaign's finish. Uh, we rebuilt the cloud stuff from the. We, we just get this game out the door. Let please, like, let's st- stop having Crackdown hang over our heads. Just get the game out of here. And let's just move on because we got Ori 2 coming. We got Gears 5 coming, which I expect great things from. And we won't hear this Xbox uh, Game Pass is an excuse for mediocrity because those two games are going to be good. Just like Forza, uh, you know, the whole first party studio acquisitions. Like I expect great things from the initiative. I expect great things from Playground Games second studio team that are making supposedly an RPG. I expect great things from Obsidian, right? I... I expect great things from Ninja Theory. You know, I'm still iffy on Compulsion Games. I'm still iffy on In Exile, mainly because I don't really care for the type of games they make, but you're really high on them. Uh, you know, I'm kind of still iffy on on Undead Labs. You know, I, I, I want it, I, but I would like to see how they improve State of Decay 3. Um, and I want to see what Rare can do when it's not Sea of Thieves. So I still think and believe, and I still have a video planned saying that I've never been more excited for the future of Xbox based on all these things that I'm saying now. It's just that I think Microsoft were at a point where these games were just, Crackdown 3 was just a disaster for so many different reasons. And they just needed to get it out and move on. So when And, and so people can get all their frustrations out right now. So when next gen comes, when all these other games come at the end, like Crackdown 3 is just so far in the rearview mirror that it doesn't even matter. You know what I mean? But yeah. but it's right here in the present, so that's all people talk about. So it's like, it's out now, and we don't even know when the next Microsoft exclusive is coming out. We don't know when Ori 2 is coming or or uh, Gears 5. You know, and, and on, on, on the PlayStation side, you know, they... Days Gone's coming in April, but beyond that, you don't know. I mean, you don't know when Dreams is coming. You don't know if anything else is coming. So it's just kind of being like led by the third party. I mean, you have Jump Force right now, which get decimated in reviews. Like, I think it's even lower than Crackdown. You had a whole bunch of different third party games coming out. And honestly, I was thinking about this and I had a conversation with a couple friends 
what if it was Microsoft's intent to bury Crackdown among all these games, right? Sony, like, they're like, all right, let's get Days Gone out from all this stuff because clearly there's too many games coming out and not everybody's going to have money to buy all this stuff. We need to move the game to April. Wise decision. But what if Microsoft just sat there and knew exactly what Crackdown 3 was and they're like, you know what? We'll bury it among all these other games so it doesn't get a lot of attention and we can just move on afterwards. You know what I mean? I honestly, so, they won't be spending so much on Terry Crews marketing. If, but I think Terry Crews, I don't really think they spent that much on Terry Crews. He barely has any lines in the game. No, yeah, but I and mean the, in the mar- in the marketing, he's in loads of trailers. He's been doing he's been doing talk shows for the game for God's sake. No, you know? I mean well, they, Microsoft still has uh, they still need to you know sell Game Pass subscriptions. You know Terry uh, Crews is the likable like, guy. I have seen they're basically marketing this as a Game Pass feature now. Like, like, um, I saw an ad on Instagram today, I think, and it wasn't, it wasn't like Crackdown three out now. It was Crackdown three out now in Game Pass, you know. Um, yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> and it's and it's funny because I ask people who you know I I asked Xbox four four eight, you know, on Crossfire last night, would you pay sixty dollars for Crackdown three? And he flat out said no. I don't have to because I have Game Pass. But what I'm trying to say is that you should want to pay $60 for this game. The fact that nobody that I've asked would say they would pay $60 for Crackdown 3 is the problem. You know what I mean? Like, that's the problem. You're all basically saying, or people are saying, it's not good enough for that price point. $60, absolutely no way. But for ten dollars, why not? It's it's for this particular game for for this in this particular instance, it's not worth it for whatever reason. And I have yet I, I haven't seen anybody in chat like. Uh, let me ask you this, chat type of one. If you would buy Crackdown three for six, like take Xbox Game Pass out of the equation. It doesn't exist. It's literally Crackdown three for sixty bucks. Because you know what? Not everybody has access to quality internet. Maybe someone can't get, you know, the only way is to get a physical copy. Who knows whatever reasons. And Phil said, like, Game Pass isn't a, uh, it's not to replace physical games or sales, right? So if... Retailers are quite worried about Game Pass. Well, I mean, I mean, they should be. I mean, in the future. I'm going to say, type in one if you would not pay $60 for Crackdown 3 and type a two if you would. I know a lot of people were doing that beforehand, uh, you know, and I, I think that I, I think this is the idea that like, I wouldn't pay, I wouldn't pay $60 for it, but it's, but that's okay. I don't know, man. Like, it's just, I know what you're saying. It, I, the worry is that Microsoft are just not going to try that hard because they'll be able to say, well, crackdown three drove game pass subs to new levels. And I bet you it will. I bet you people will subscribe for Crackdown because it's a, it's a it's a pretty well known brand and there's curiosity about the cloud and all that sort of stuff. I would not be surprised at all if they have some good stats for Crackdown soon. Well, of course not, like well, engagement yeah. stats and stuff like that. Because I mean, yeah, because if anybody's interested in Crackdown, why would you buy it at sixty bucks? Yeah. Right? At least, like you mentioned before, State of Decay two priced right. Thirty dollars, although that got a little backlash for not being AAA and priced at sixty bucks, but at least it was priced appropriately. Recore priced appropriately. Crackdown three, in my opinion, is not priced appropriately. Crackdown three should at most be forty bucks, and honestly, it should be thirty dollars. I think that campaign is is right around thirty, and I know there's still the multiplayer, which we haven't even talked about, Jazz, because there's the whole issue of the friend stuff. Not being able to invite your like, give me your quick thoughts about that. The the whole fact that Xbox Live Party functionality is not in a uh, multiplayer game from Microsoft day one. Well, I do know that the system, the system they made for Crackdown's cloud stuff, it created a, a range of problems that were just unanticipated because. They've never done anything like this before. This has never really been done before. And I know people always talk about, oh, well, Battlefield has destruction and or Red Faction Guerrilla has destruction. But it, it's not really like this destruction. Like, for example, like Battlefield's destruction is scripted. 
and it only happens on the client side, you know, and um, and Red Faction Gorilla's destruction too is simplistic, and the chunks disappear as they're falling down and stuff like that. Um, whereas right, Crackdowns is more persistent and it's synchronized for everyone in the server, so it's a bit it's a bit weird in that sense. And I'm wondering if um, there is probably some sort of problem with the whole matchmaking system. And I don't want to be sound like I'm making excuses for them, but I do know that it has been like a, a complicated journey to get, get it to where it is. I interviewed Brian Stone, who's in charge of Microsoft's engineering stuff for Xbox. And, uh, he, you know, he was just saying like, you know, Created all sorts of mathematical problems and system problems and stuff like that. Maybe they just didn't want to spend any more money on on it. Like you say, they just wanted to get it out the door and forget about it. Right. Shout um, out to them. But it is it is awful that it's not there though because it's it's a basic multiplayer. I know feature. it is so basic. Uh, shout out to the new member of the channel, uh, Leandro Prio. Thank you uh, so much for the support, man. Um. Windows 10 by 1 says, Rand, you don't have to remove Game Pass out of the equation. Well, in my... Okay, so here's the thing. When I review the game, I, I, I kind of have to remove Game Pass from the equation. Because normally when I review a game, I, I give a recommendation if... Um, if I would recommend this at the price it's, it, it launches at. Because obviously Crackdown 3 is not going to be $60 a year from now. But it's, cra- it's, it's $60 now. So would I recommend it at its current price point? I, I do that for like all my reviews. Um, and I'll mention it's in Game Pass, of course. Like, hey, it's in Game Pass. You can get it for a dollar or ten dollars. Like, but if you were to buy this game, do I think it's worth it or do I not think it's worth it? That's how I usually end all my reviews if you guys watch my stuff. And I think you have to judge it by that. I think you have to be like, is Crackdown 3 worthy of a purchase? And I don't know. Like, like just <laughs> uh, see, now you got my mind thinking. I'm thinking of all, all these so many different things right now. But um, I kind of wanted to talk about uh, Crackdown 3 or like the, the future of Xbox first party, Jez. Um, I've been on I've been on record. I think it's, and I know like this po- this podcast has mostly been crapping on Crackdown Three, but I still firmly believe that brighter things are on the horizon for Xbox, right? Firmly, you have to you have to believe that at this point. I mean, it's been just n- almost nonstop disapp- disappointment. You got Forza. Forza is a bright spot, but it's like. State of Decay didn't review that well as much as I personally lo- like loved State of Decay. It didn't review that well. You've got like Sea of Thieves, and we all know how Sea of Thieves did c- critically and stuff like that, which is weird because it's seen a bit. Of, I don't know if we've had a podcast in Sea of Thieves had its like curious resurgence thanks to streamers, but um, it wasn't received that well and continues to be a bit controversial, you know, in some ways. And then you know all the other games, you know. Loco cycle, Green Bright. Yeah. Yeah. Those I mean, sorts I, of games. It has so many, been a good gen for exclusive games. I got so many video ideas I want to do. And I'm always open for video ideas from people. Like my DMs are open. You can always slide in them and, you know, be like, hey, I got this idea. You should do it. But like, one of them is like how this gen has just been a lost gen for Xbox, like new IP wise. Like all of them essentially failed. Uh, the only one that really seemed to hit was Ori. Uh, sea of Thieves had the resurgence, which I think will save that game. I'm not sure if they'll do a Sea of Thieves 2, though. I think they'll just kind of do Sea of Thieves as an ongoing game. And I don't know if you noticed, Jazz, but ever since Apex Legends came out, Sea of Thieves is nowhere to be found on Twitch. It's nobody... so it's so mean, isn't it? Like, I mean, it, it's sea just... Thieves really had a chance there to, to make a foothold. But then, like, Apex Legends drops, and it's like, oh, by the way, we've forgotten Sea of Thieves exists. But that's that's just that's the way it goes with streaming. <laughs> like, people just move on to the next best thing. Like, I don't know if you saw, but, like, Fortnite, Fortnite's freaking out about Apex Legends. They've mm-hmm. started taking out ads on Google for um, the keyword Apex Legends. Did they? Oh, man. Yeah. Which is Did they? a bit, bit desperate, isn't it? And it, so- show, it, it goes to show how much of a... 
a cash cow it is for Epic Games because like if, if all of a sudden everyone goes to uh, Apex and forgets that Fortnite exists, well, that's going to be a dent. I don't think room. I don't think that will happen because Fortnite skews way younger than Apex. I think Apex skews a lot older. Fortnite. I think I don't think Fortnite's going anywhere. Yeah, but you want think, the, you want those older people because they've got cool. money. Sure, sure, you, you definitely do. But then the younger people also have their parents' credit cards. So, <laughs> but Michael So has a question in chat. He says, "Can Microsoft redeem themselves with Xbox Two? Absolutely. Look at look at the history of consoles. Look at the history of consoles. I mean, just look at Sony. Uh, you know, pinnacle of gaming. PS One, PS Two." Two of the best-selling systems ever. They stumbled, you know, they fell flat on their face with the PS3. It was, people forget, but Rand doesn't. Rand remembers. Pepperidge Farm. Because I've I've been around the game for a long, long, long time. PS3 was ridiculed. A lot. A lot. I remember the memes, PS3 has no game. Like, PS3 was the laughing stock much like the Xbox One of the video game community back in 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, it, there literally wasn't a good game on PlayStation 3 until 2009. Hey, what about Massive Action Game? No. No. Right? It took Sony time to get it right. And then here you go with the play- PlayStation 4 back on top. Nintendo. Nintendo was on top of the world with the Wii. And then they released the Wii U. The Right next to the Dreamcast, one of the worst systems, worst selling systems ever. Right? And then now look at the Switch. Back on top again. People loving it. I'm just saying, Microsoft had a bad generation. Yes, they did. They'll admit they've had a bad generation for a lot of different reasons. We've talked about on this podcast. Uh, No, you know, I mean, we don't, do we really need to reiterate an overpriced system, an underpowered system. Uh, what else? Uh, the DRM stuff, the Connect stuff. I mean, every, okay. everything that could possibly went wrong for Microsoft this gen went wrong for Microsoft this generation. And I see Merle <sighs> Flynn saying that the PS3 still ended up selling the 360 because it was in more territories. That's true. And that's a testament for Sony to, for sticking with that system. Yes. And and I've always said Sony's a more of a worldwide brand than Xbox is. But still... The beginning of that generation, people were making fun of PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 3 fans. Because if you weren't a 360 fan, you weren't playing games. The only game that the PlayStation 3 fans were holding on to Metal Gear Solid 4 forever. Because it was the game. It was the game that was supposed to change everything for PlayStation 3. I and they bought, were holding on I bought to a that, PS3. You know? I bought a PS3 just for Metal Gear Solid 4 and then returned it. I mean, <laughs> so many people did, but it didn't... It, it just... History repeats itself. You need to pay attention to history because history always repeats itself. So can Microsoft redeem themselves? Absolutely. All people want from Microsoft and all I want from Microsoft is just better games. That's all people care about. So right now, Crackdown 3, yes, it's the laughing stock of gaming. It's a 60 from Microsoft, a first party, uh, you know, a console manufacturer. You don't really see that happen very much. And yes, Sony's had their missteps too, like the order and knack and things of that nature. It's not like Sony's immune from these things. They also release stinkers, right? But the thing is, all people care about is great games. And all Microsoft needs to do is have a stretch of quality content that people can enjoy. So Ori 2 is going to be amazing. I think Gears 5 is going to be way better than Gears 4. And then all their new studio acquisitions, I think will put out quality content and as long as Microsoft focuses on the right things for next gen, which is games and a, and a really powerful system, they'll be perfectly fine. And yeah, you, no matter what, you'll still have people say, well, I don't need an Xbox because I can play PC and I can play it on mobile. I mean, Good. that's true. Like if that's all, yeah, is that, if that's the worst thing you can say about it, then fine. You know, play, that's play where you want to play Good with. though. It's better margins for Microsoft. I'm just saying that's that's what people will say. But I'm just saying, like, they can redeem themselves. I think they will redeem themselves. Does that mean they're going to beat the PlayStation 5? I don't think so. Because I just said, the PlayStation is a more worldwide brand. Unless streaming takes off in a way that nobody predicted, and Microsoft is literally selling to a billion gamers on mobile and elsewhere, 
the PlayStation Five is going to sell more consoles because they. I mean, just look at it right now. It's like the three. The the Xbox One is about forty some odd million or fifty million consoles behind the PlayStation right now, right? But they're only losing by four million in the United States. The rest of it is Europe. Sure, they're they're down by like nine million in Japan. But the other 40 million is literally Europe where Microsoft has no presence and basically ceded back control from the 360 era to PlayStation. I think that some will... Of the, um, some of the indie shops in Germany don't even have a section for Xbox. Yeah. They got Switch, they got PlayStation, PC, and they got nothing for Xbox. And you can't, you can't buy um, Microsoft point cards in... Um, or Microsoft, uh, you know, store credit cards in... Uh, in the shops you can buy playstation you can buy steam but you can't buy xbox because no no one in germany has an xbox yeah except for me but i'm gonna make this vid soon and i i mean look i know people are gonna really because i guess i am half class full on this one i really do think that the future is brighter like looking forward at the games we're going to get but i've been wrong before and if i'm wrong i'll i'll be the first one to admit it if ninja theory starts putting out poo and if halo 5 or halo 6 is trash and if ori 2 isn't better than ori 1 and you know if like all if it just comes raining down you'd be have to like well maybe there is a management problem at at microsoft maybe they're just not good at managing studios maybe they're just not good at making uh decisions you know and if that does happen we'll have that conversation but I don't. I don't think that will happen. I, I don't think it will. But for right now, EG, I mean, what what are people calling Crackdown? I've seen people call it Letdown Three, Laughdown Three. Like, there's <laughs> so many funny different things about it, and it doesn't affect me at all. I just, I, I, it, you can make fun of Crackdown on Xbox all you want. I don't care. It doesn't affect me. It's just a piece of plastic that I play under my TV. It was whatever. I'm not a, I'm not emotionally attached to any of this stuff like a lot of people are. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm I'm just looking towards the future, and I'll I'll, I'll explain that very well in my video. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Did you like that? Did you like that rant? I yeah. Just, I just thought I'd sit back and let let you have a go. Yeah. I got <laughs> I got I got, a lot, I got a lot to say, man. I got a lot to say. You know. Um. But I still. I still can't believe they didn't launch a party system with Crackdown 3's multiplayer. And I haven't played it myself. So maybe I shouldn't even say anything. Because I don't normally comment on things I haven't experienced. It's it's but my god, it does not look good. I, I I gave them when I played it in October, right? For that preview. Was it October or November? I played it I played it before Christmas for a preview at Redmond. And I gave them all my feedback. I was like you know, you're not you're not really using the cloud in the gameplay at all. You know, there should be like it should be a class based shooter, really. I was thinking it should be a class based shooter. There should be a class that can like rebuild the cover and stuff so that teammates can use the cover you know strategically and stuff it just feels like the cover the destructible environment is there for the sake of it and then they've put like the most basic shooter on top of it that has almost no intersecting gameplay with the the cover whatsoever and and destructible environments it just it's just there's no vision there's no vision it's like you know baby's first multiplayer game you know it's awful um, and they haven't really changed it from my preview, which I, you know, wrote very in a sort of feedback sort of context, like, you know, it should be more like this, or, you know, it should probably be more like this or whatever. And <clears throat> I don't like to, I don't like to try and dictate and stuff. I always try and frame things as feedback, but it just didn't feel good to play and it still doesn't feel good to play and the power of the cloud yeah it works but it's pointless you know if you're gonna, pointless. If you're gonna it's pointless like having the cloud cloud destruction it doesn't make the game fun I and mean, the, the first you yeah it's i mean it's it's cool to see the first couple of times and it's like oh wow that's amazing but then it's like okay now what you know it doesn't there's no there's no bearing on the, st the strategy of multiplayer 
as a result of the cloud. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I know. And um, man, I think another thing you could take away from this is that it don't show your behind the scenes footage tech demo for what you hope it to be to the public. And then uh, when it doesn't look like that, you know what I mean? Like they should have really have not have shown that uh, Dave Jones and the cloud gen, that whole destruction thing, because that sets expectations. That sets well, precedent. Well, 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 yeah, I know there's the whole story behind what happened, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying there's a reason why people are comparing. There's a reason why the red dragon made that they video. Tr they trusted. Well, that's why uh, true. That's why people are mad. <laughs> I know, I understand, but I'm just saying they trusted, they trusted that stuff to Dave Jones and Cloud Gin, but then they went off and joined Epic Games. I, they and sure it did. Screwed the whole game. They sure did. But I'm just saying, people look at that and be like, "This is what you showed us, and this is what you told us it would be back in 2015." Well, this it is why Microsoft is buying studios because I they know. don't, they don't want to have to trust people anymore. Well, that and, that's... and this is this is the problem. This is the problem when you're dealing with second pie, is that so much of it's built on trust and faith, and it's like, yeah, we hope the second party dev will take our money and spend it building a game for us. We hope they will, and that the contract says they should. But the thing is, that there's so many ways they can circumvent that stuff and just be like, oh well, we had unforeseen development issues and stuff like that. You can effectively hold Microsoft to ransom, you know. And yes. be like, well, you can't cancel the game because it'll make you look bad, you know. So Microsoft has sort of they've gotten into this this place now where they pretty much can't do any second party stuff anymore because the the risk involved is too great to be worth it. Well, know? they should have. I mean, that's my that was my one of my biggest issues with the Xbox was they relied on second party way too much to build games for them, and it worked last gen because they were the leader. But it completely backfired this generation, and if it took Crackdown Three and pl and 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 Scalebound and Lionhead, like if it took all those reasons to to finally get it through their heads that you know what in-house development is better than basically mercenary work, then fine, great, because I think we'll get a better Xbox out of it. If, if that's if if the sacrifice is Crackdown Three and Scalebound, then I guess I'm good with that. Like Sam, Sam Toba says, well, Ori's second party, but your point is valid. Moon Studios is the exception by far. That's the only one that really worked out this whole gen was Ori. Hey, everything else, hey, hey, everything hey. else didn't. We're, hey. we're never getting a Quantum Break 2. We're never getting a Rise 2. We're never going to get a Sunset Overdrive 2. I'm not even sure we're going to get a Record 2, even, they, even though they did a Record Definitive Edition. It's the lost generation is what I'm dubbing. What about, what about Scream Ride? The, you, the destruction tech in Streamride was better than the destruction tech in Crackdown. <laughs> and that was a launch title. Screamride that was the launch, launch title. title. No, no, no. Screamride uh, wasn't a launch title. I mean, it was pretty much close to launch. Uh, you know? It wasn't, was it? I mean, it, I, I think it was around launch. launch was it? Well, whatever. You're, think, I mean, you're thinking a loco cycle, probably. Loco cycle. You know? It's <laughs> like this gen was this gen's just just a lot it's just it's microsoft's got to just hold that l they gotta hold that l realize why they came uh you know why they dropped so far and just regroup and do better next gen which is, i think exactly what's going to happen it sucks what? saying that what, what was the premise of loco cycle <sighs> local cycle there was this sentient motors it was a sentient motorbike and that, like, you were like a gardener or something that got attached to it, and you just drove and did. It was the dumbest game I could play. See, that's the thing. I don't understand how somebody could play Local Cycle and think, yeah, you know what? This is this is this is good for Microsoft first party. This is what people want. You know, like I like. Here's the thing. I understand Super Lucky's Tale, f at least from the uh, idea of wanting to expand your demographics. It appeals to a younger audience. Like I get it from that thing. But Luke, local cycle appeals to nobody, you know. So what about cycling enthusiasts? What might not appeal to them? I don't know. And you know, the funny thing is, Microsoft bought that studio. They they bought Twisted Pixel, uh, the people that did Local Cycle and uh, ca that Captain Smiley game and the Maw and stuff. You know, I Wasn't the Maw pretty good. Maw was actually pretty good, and and Comic Jumper, I think, it was called Comic Jumper, was good. And I it was like, okay, Microsoft bought them. They're good. Um, you know, developer can make smaller titles, and then they did Local Cycle, 
And then all of a sudden it was like, uh, oh, they also did Splosion Man, I believe Splosion Man, and Miss Splosion Man, which I think were both of theirs. And then they were like, no, you're gone. We're, we're, we're cutting you off. And I think they sold back the IPs to Twisted Pixel. And I'm not even sure they've done anything since then. I'm not sure Twisted Pixel has done anything since then. The same thing happened with Press Start, I think. Uh, press people, Play. Press Play. Uh, I don't think they even made a game with Xbox. They bought them after Max and the Curse they of the Brotherhood. They did. They made Tentacles Enter the Mind for Windows Ooh, Phone. For Windows Phone. Oh, that's a total win right there. Windows Dude, Phone. Dude, that game was sweet. I'm sorry. No. Ten- Tentacles Enter the Mind. Was Man, there's really so, many, so many bad decisions about this. Oh, and this is another thing I wanted to talk about. Shutting there down is- Windows Phone was a bad decision. Well, there's been a lot of bad decisions, but <laughs> who do you blame for Crackdown 3, Jez? I've seen this going around a lot. Some people blame... Cloud Gin. Okay. I blame Cloud Gin. Some people well, blame... I, I, well, no, to be honest, I can't blame Cloud Gin because they were <laughs> for, they did what was right for their studio, which was going on to make Fortnite, which is one of the biggest games ever. So you can't really blame Cloud Gin. It's just, it's just a series of unfortunate events. Right. Like, so, would, would Crackdown have been amazing if Cloud Gin had stayed on? Probably not, but it probably would have been in a better shape. But we got Fortnite out of it, so you can blame Crackdown for Fortnite too, in in yeah. a way. So we got we got like 370 watching at one point. Uh, do us a favor, guys. If you enjoy the show, make sure you hit that like button. Really appreciate it, and subscribe if you're new. Um, so who do you blame for this? Because I see this going around a lot. Some people are like. This is, yes, this is the last of the Don Matrick games. And we blame Don Matrick. Some people be like, I blame Phil Spencer. Some people be like, I blame the developers, blah, 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 blah. But there is this sentiment that it's, you have to blame Don Matrick because it's his last game. That Phil Spencer is free of blame on this one. And I'm going to give my opinion real quick and then you can interject. Look, I'm on record. I like Phil a lot. I'm a little biased when it comes to the guy. He's done a lot for me personally. He's He's a really genuine dude. But the idea that Phil Spencer is blameless when it comes to Crackdown 3, I think is wrong on this one. Um, because, and yes, I know I know Terry was, was involved. He's you know the one that throttled the budget. And I know Don was the head of Xbox. But Phil greenlit Crackdown. Phil was head of Xbox Studios. So when... When people talk about, oh, like Phil gave us Super Lucky's Tale and Crackdown and Cancel Skebon, but he gave us Rise and all these other... Phil gave you all those games. Phil gave you Quantum Break and Sunset Overdrive and Rise and all that stuff because Phil was head of first party studios from 2009 to 2014. He signed all those deals. Those are all his games. And Crackdown is one of his favorite franchises. So the idea that after Don Matrick left and and... Phil was head of Xbox, also head of first party because he didn't hire Matt Booty until last year that he didn't have a say in how Crackdown was structured at all, I think is a little wrong on that. Well, he Phil's been on record to say that the delays were him to get the feel of the yes. game up, right? So, yes. So I, I think people, here's the thing. I think people want to put out I this notion... Blame- I want to blame Terry Morrison for. I know you want to blame, every, but you can't Matrix. blame everything on Terry Morrison. Watch me. I'm going to blame everything. I, on I Terry know. Morrison. I know. Watch I know me. you're going to blame. I blame Look. literally everything. He killed my phone. <laughs> he killed Cortana. He killed. He killed my dreams, Rand. Yes, he killed. He killed, he killed everything. I I think, and Phil would say this too, that the successes of Xbox are him and 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 mostly his team because he usually shies away to that. But the the problems that Xbox has faced, has faced, and he's been on record saying this too. Um, he was in those boardrooms. He was in those meetings. You know what I mean? So it's like, I know people, it because it's easy to say, oh, it's the last of the Don Matrick games. Everything's going to be great going forward. Phil Spencer's blameless. It's like, I don't think that's the case. I think you're just trying to like, you don't want to assign blame to Phil because he's such a good guy, a good guy, and I think he is. But he shoulders some of the blame. He's head of he's head of Xbox. He's head of first party. He he loves Crackdown. I I think you can blame a lot of people for it. You know, you can blame like Jez said. He blames Cloud Gen. He blames Dave Jones more than anybody. 
because of what it did to the game. He blames Terry Meyerson for the throttling of the budget and what he did to the Xbox division. He blamed Don Matrick for fucking everything up and killing my phone. It's killing your phone and, and, and screwing up the Xbox, uh, you know, and basically making Terry Meyerson right when he went to Satya and tell him, Hey, cut off the funding and we need to make it more windows. And you can blame Phil for everything. Look, Just to ha- think, think about how much time has been lost to screwing around with the UWP. You know, you forget, yep. you forget about that whole thing where, Xbox had to upend its development tool chains to try and accommodate Windows's f- attempt at making its own store with UWP. Think how much money and time has been wasted with that. Because Microsoft's pretty much poised to, well, Phil's pretty much poised to get rid of it now. No, and not get rid of it, but there's you know there's rumors that games like UWP aren't going to matter so much anymore because on the latest build of the Windows Insider program. Um, Games are no longer being delivered by UWP, and they're testing they're testing Win32 on UWP uh, on the Windows Store. Sorry, so oh, that's that's Terry Myerson's fault too. It, everything if you love to blame Terry I love, Myerson I love blaming for him. everything, and I will. I blame him for everything because it's there's a reason he's gone, man. There is I, a reason he is gone. Trust me, I know. I'm just saying you you love to blame everything uh, everything on him. I think I think there's phone. a he I think there's enough that. blame to go around for everybody. If if you want to credit Phil for some of the success, successes of Xbox, you also got to put some of the things that are wrong on him too. And he would say that he's blame, the boss. He's he's the X boss. Blame Roby. But um, yeah, you know what? I think that's a good spot to end the show. Uh, we'll take a few questions before we get out of here. I know Ashton Luca has her podcast going on right now, which uh, you know, I don't, I didn't want to run too long into hers because she usually has Scumcast. At 4 p.m. So make sure you guys check out her show. But hit us up with some questions in the chat. Uh, we really appreciate the support today. I know it's a Saturday. Uh, we normally wouldn't be doing it, but we had to. So we appreciate everybody live with us today here on YouTube or listening later on Google and iTunes and stuff. So um, while you're typing out your questions, make sure you hit that like button. Or if you're going to leave, hit the like button, subscribe, uh, share it out. Um, we appreciate it. And face always with the question ready. He says, Randy Jez, what's your thoughts on Sean Layden interview he had this week? Um, did you have any thoughts on that, Jez? Do you see what uh I didn't see what he said? So the one I mean, I did two videos about it, but so I'll I'm gonna say I'll tell you about the cross play stuff he said, right? He said that they're open to business on PlayStation, that all developers have oh, to do yeah. is just talk to their PlayStation account manager and then Wargroove's uh developer was like we did and we were told no so <laughs> and so someone, they were, they were someone, someone, is, someone is asking me constantly in chat if you're german so do you want to answer that no i am british but i live you're in british. germany there you go because uh, i am a citizen of the european union at least for the next couple of weeks okay so so what do you think about that whole crossplay stuff I uh, I think it's hilarious that they were caught out lying, if indeed they were lying. I don't see why Wargroove would make it up. Uh, Wargroove's pretty good, by the way. I've been playing it a little bit on Xbox Play Anywhere. It's, uh, Wargroove is like a turn-based strategy game with uh, charming pixel anime sort of art. It's pretty good. Um, and it's on Xbox Play Anywhere, which is always a nice bonus. Um, and apparently they wanted to have cross-play for... PlayStation and Sony said no, but it's uh, it's annoying that they feel they can get away with that if it is if indeed they were lying. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's kind of like they're treating their customers like idiots if they think they can just lie their way around the issue. I mean, if they if they're not if they don't want crossplay, they should just admit. You know. Just admit it. I mean, no one's going to blame them if if it's like, I mean, we've we've talked about this on previous shows where it's like, we don't, we it doesn't make it's not a good business decision for Sony in the short term to enable crossplay because it removes a reason to buy PlayStation, you know. Um, so I wouldn't blame Sony. If, I don't blame Sony for blocking crossplay. It's not a good business decision for them. Like it wasn't a good business decision for the Xbox 360 last gen. It's yeah. a, it's it's a good business decision if you're the underdog, but it's not a good business decision if you're the leader. So 
I don't think anyone could really blame Sony for that. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan Landis wants to know, what, what would you say are the best first-party games of the Xbox One era? Okay, I actually tweeted out that. I think, like, my personal favorite, I think, that the, the one that I had the least issues with is probably Killer Instinct. See, this is where me and you are going to differ, because Killer Instinct's not first-party. Yeah. Microsoft's first-party games this gen are... Forza Motorsport 5, Forza Motorsport 6, Forza Motorsport 7, Forza Microsoft Horizon 4, Halo IP. 5. It's first Pi. No, it's not. First part. It, 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 here's the thing. I know they can maybe consider it first party because they it's do consider it first I, I party don't, because they don't own they don't own double helix and they didn't own um and it's first pi because they bloody well own Killer Instinct. It's first pi. I know, but I don't. We, we, we just we just talked about we just had a whole segment about relying on second party to create games for you. Well, that's an exception to the rule, isn't it? So okay, for this for because if we're really just going by Microsoft's first party, well, that, that means that, like you can't you can't count any of the, the Forza games then before no. Playground. Well, yeah, I don't. It's Forza Horizon Four. All the, all the three, two, and one. I don't. Yeah, Forza Horizon Four was made before they were purchased by Play by Microsoft. Ah, so but see, it came out after they were acquired. I was, I, but most but, of uh, them, they were like, acquired. Yeah, they were only acquired. only the last like five percent of the game. Okay, that was committed. So to we won't include Forza the Horizon Four. Fighting. So it'd be Sea of Thieves, Halo Five, <laughs> Gears Four. Um, dude, that's such and, an arbitrary rule. I'm. It's not an arbitrary rule it in Minecraft. Arbitrary. When when they throw up their Xbox Game Studios logo, it had four studios on it. For Christ's sake. It didn't also have uh, Sumo Digital and uh, all these other fucking yeah, we're not studios. Talking about that... studios. We're talking about games, aren't we? Oh, yeah, first part. Okay, fine. You know what? We'll include everything that I don't... Mm. All right. Ori is the best game. Quantum Break is a game I really enjoyed. I actually... <laughs> I think Rise is better than what it is on Metacritic. 60 at Metacritic. I enjoyed it. I would give it a 75. Um... Halo 5, the best multiplayer. I loved Halo 5. So those would be my picks. But I'm I'm still first party. Man, like, mm, I, if it, if we're, we're talking about my definition of first party, it's Halo 5. <laughs> it's really nothing there, dude. I, got, I don't know. <laughs> what, what do you think? Which, which, which one's yours? I kind of instinct's my favorite, but it's, I'm kind of biased because I have nostalgia for that franchise a lot other than that i think quantum break i really enjoyed that but i'm perpetually annoyed that we're never going to get a sequel um i really love gears 4 played the hell out of that loved horde mode in that game um and what can i say i like chainsawing people in half i'm pretty simple like that man i think those would be my picks yeah, I, like, I figured I figured as much. The thing yeah. is, all of those games. Oh well, and Ori as well. But the thing is, oh, actually, I really like State of Decay as well. I think I put more hours into State of Decay than probably any other Microsoft first party game. But hmm. um, but again, it's like I know that's not going to be for everyone. And the thing is, I, those games, even though like I enjoyed State of Decay a lot, the the be- the, the the bulk of fun. By far, I've had on Xbox is with third party. Like it's not even close. Mm. Okay. Same. Okay. Good answer. Uh, let's see here. Um, more questions. Um, uh, we have one from Gunstar. He wants to know if Forza Horizon Five set in Japan will be enough to sell Xboxes in that territory. Nope. Nope. Not at all. Not a chance. They need. JRPGs. They need titles that specifically are tailored to that country, and I'm not sure that's going to happen. Um, let's see. Uh, Sub Sub Zedox. Are you the Zedox from Reset Era and the Discord? Maybe he is. Do you think all the launch titles of Xbox Scarlet Family of Games will be cross gen? Hmm. We butted head in this for a long time. You said they would all be cross gen. The la- oh, so he's just saying the launch titles. The yes. launch titles will be cross Yes, I, I used to think that. Um, I used to think that like with UWP and 
what they were what they were going for originally with UWP that it would be a possibility. But looking that looking uh, considering the fact that UWP sort of being not wound down but sort of deprioritized for games, I'm now in the greens with Rand that that's not gonna be the case anymore. Yeah. Chalk one up to me. I win again. Um Merle Films wants to know, do you think Microsoft for Sony next gen will tout 200 million users? I think Microsoft will be able to achieve that with their new play anywhere initiative. 200 million users. That's a tall order. What is, what was their last uh, Microsoft update was like 64, right? Jez, something like that. 62, 65, something like that. 140 million. I mean, if that does happen, that's a big win for Microsoft. They'll do it with, um, if X cloud works, that could do it, man. I that's I that's. You. I mean, I think Sony's at ninety million right now. Um, between all theirs, uh, that's going to be tough for them. Uh, to the get thing is, like Microsoft is like Microsoft is not half-assing XCloud. They've got like they're working with uh, accessory partners to make like better controller docks for phones. You know, they they're working with developers to make unique touch controls for games like they're not just gonna slap a, a virtual xbox controller on the screen and you know forget about it they want they actually want it to be a quality experience and make it ex- as accessible and uncrappy as possible because like playing games on a phone usually sucks right microsoft wants it to not suck and i think if anyone can nail that experience it's probably microsoft so i think they could do it X Cloud works if it all works and it's the right price point. I think that could do it before Sony. Yeah. And you know what? I think we're going to end on that question. So thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, Jez, you got anything in the pipeline that people should know about? Check it out on Windows Central or anything? Um, I've got a big Xbox adaptive controller feature going live next week. I've been working with a chat with uh, brittle bone disease. To get himself with an Xbox adaptive controller here in Germany. Uh, it's been a pretty amazing story. We've been working together for a few months now to try and get him set up with the Xbox adaptive controller. And, you know, because he doesn't have full use of his hands and being able to, you know, use the Xbox adaptive controller to circumvent some of those limitations is, you know, let him play Ori for the first time, for example, and Forza and stuff like that. So, um, that's going to be a cool story next week. Um, other than that, I'm going to be knee deep in Anthem guides, probably. I think. Um, yeah. Also, there's one thing we didn't address that I wanted to address this week, and that is uh, Blizzard firing 800 people oh, yeah. in the same breath as Bobby Kotick, announcing record profits. I don't think we need to talk much about this, but I just want to say uh, screw Activision Blizzard and yes well we we, will talk more about it in depth in the next podcast but yes this is more focused on the crackdown stuff and xbox but yeah yeah. hey by the way we made record profits uh a thousand people get the f out um it's gonna be interesting it sucks it sucks for all those people but i I wonder i wonder they must they must really be forecasting profits for down for next year they they really must be worried about Fortnite and Apex Legends eating into their business and stuff. Well, but. a lot of the people that they've cut loose have been like middle management, marketing, esports, and they actually said they're going to grow the amount of developers that the main franchises have so they can pump out more games, which is probably potentially a good thing for the end user, but it sucks, man, because like Blizzard, Blizzard like had a, had a soul, you know, and there, mm-hmm. there are people who've been Blizzard who shaped that country's ethos for the last 15 years. There, there are 15-year veterans who've been sack, sacked at Blizzard this week. They weren't given any fore notice. They were just like, oh, by the way, you're fired now. And like, yep. as part of their investor call. And it's, it just, it's such a terrible way to treat people. It sure is. Um, and on that note, that somber note, we're going to end the show. Uh, we appreciate everybody watching here live on YouTube who left a comment or a super chat or anything. We appreciate it. Hi to everybody watching on iTunes and uh, Google play. It'll be up soon. Uh, and if you enjoyed the show, make sure to give it a like and subscribe, follow Jez on Twitter. All the links are in the description. Uh, we appreciate it. And we'll see you n- this week, I guess. I mean, say Saturday. So next week, we'll see you next week uh, for a brand new show. So thanks guys. And we will see you later.
Have a good one.